In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we gather together today on this Wednesday of the seventh week of Easter. We celebrate not only that the fact that Jesus is risen, but he has ascended into heaven, where he sits at the right hand of the Father. And we await now the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, which we'll, we will celebrate this coming Sunday. Let us prepare our hearts now to meet with Christ during this Eucharist today. But first, let us ask God to grant us the grace of his mercy and forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Graciously grant to your church, O merciful God, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, she may be devoted to you with all her heart and united in purity of intent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock, of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth, to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well that these hands have served my needs and my, com my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work, of that sort, we must help the weak. And keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring you gifts. Sing, Sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of, of the, the earth. earth. Your kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Chant praise to the Lord, who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his voice resounds, the voice of power. Confess the power of God. Sing, Sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of, of the earth. earth. O Israel, in his majesty, his power is in the skies. Awesome in his sanctu sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing, Sing to, to God, God, O kings of, of the earth. earth. Alleluia, alleluia, 
Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost, except the Son of Destruction, in order that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely, I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth, for your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world and I consecrate myself for them, so that they may also be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul was a very powerful witness of Jesus. We remember that um, he began as an enemy of Christianity, as Saul, the Pharisee, he despised anyone who wanted to follow Jesus or this newfangled faith of Christianity. And so he persecuted Christians. But then he encountered Christ on the road to Damascus in a very, very special supernatural way. And he was converted. He believed. He met Jesus. And after that, his life was changed. Everyone's life is changed when we encounter Christ. We can't stay the same. And that's maybe why some people are afraid of encountering him. Because they know that their lives cannot be the same once they encounter Jesus. It has to change. Because we cannot say with one breath that, We know Jesus and live our lives as though we didn't. It just doesn't work that way. When we encounter Jesus, it it affects our very being and, and who we are. And so we must be changed. But we are changed for the better, as Paul was changed for the better. He turned around and became not only a proponent of Christianity, but a but an apostle who went out to the ends of the earth, as far as he could possibly go, to teach people about Jesus. And he suffered a lot for it. Persecution, beatings, imprisonment, shipwrecks, stonings, all kinds of things. But he kept at it, he kept going, and even encouraged those who, whom he taught, those new people who were, weren't as strong as he was, who were more delicate in their faith, he encouraged them to keep faithful to Christ. And it was through his prayers and through his support and encouragement that many people encountered Jesus and were changed, and changed for the better. We hear how people developed a a great relationship with Paul, that in today's first reading in the Acts of the Apostles, The people were very sad when he said they probably would never see him again. Paul tried to keep in contact with the communities that he founded, the Christian communities he founded, by sending letters, and like we know, that was what most of the New Testament is composed of, St. Paul's letters to those communities. 
But he developed a relationship, a real relationship with those people to demonstrate the power of God's love, that he cares for them, and that they are important people. And they could understand that and know that through Paul and his example and his words. Jesus in the gospel today is speaking to his disciples and about his disciples. He is praying to his Father to keep them strong, to keep them faithful, because they were chosen to be his followers. It was these people that, especially handpicked by God, to be the ones that would deliver the message of the gospel to the world. The power of prayer is very important. We, on our, our, by ourselves, we just can't do things. But with God's power behind us, everything is possible. We got those examples in both our first and second reading today. When Paul prayed with the people before he boarded the ship, and Jesus himself, who prayed for his own disciples, that they would be faithful, that they would be strong, and they would be protected against the evil one. May our prayer be strong so that we may be protected from the evil one who still is in this world today, who wants to seek us out, who wants us to want nothing more than we fail in our faith journey, that we fall away from Christ, that we fall, but through prayer, we can be strong for ourselves. We pray for one another as well. And that's what the community of the Christian church is about. We being together, supporting one another, praying for one another. And that is what our strength is. The flag of the, of the Catholic church, our Catholic faith, our Christian faith, is our oneness in the Lord as a community of people. Right now, that oneness is being challenged as, the, as this coronavirus has separated us. But we are praying also for that day when we can come together again, as we should. Because being Christian means being in community. And that's where we should be. So let us continue to pray for that and be thankful to God that he has given us his son to lead us and guide us and to give us the gift of our faith, and the gift of eternal life. Please join with me now, everyone, as we come together to pray our prayers and to offer these prayers for ourselves and for one another. For our Holy Church, may she be guided in truth through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials, may the grace of God live in their hearts for peace and justice in the, world, in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alienated, lonely, or cast off, and for those whose human dignity is overlooked, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may we be formed and transformed by the word and sacrament and be united ever more closely to the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the perpetual light shine upon them and may the rest of eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Fidel Santos, and for our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers that we offer you today in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen and ascended and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate as our dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you were pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, Jesus ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, Father. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Fidel and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostle, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of God. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer each other now a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins of the world. world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May our partaking of this divine sacrament, O Lord, constantly increase your grace within us, and by cleansing us with its power, make us always ready to receive so great a gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for participating at Mass today. On this Wednesday of the seventh week of Easter, we continue in our, our preparation for the acceptance of the Holy Spirit, which we will celebrate this coming Sunday on Pentecost and bring to its conclusion this whole Easter season. In the meantime, we continue to pray for a conclusion also to this pandemic, to the coronavirus, and we are asking our Blessed Mother to assist us in that, as we have been at all our Masses. And so I'd like to ask you once again to join us in this prayer to our Blessed Mother, that she may intercede with us, for us, pray with us and for us. And so we pray. O Mary, you always brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving Mother, you know what we need, 
and we are confident you will provide for us as at Cana in Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son, Jesus, the Divine Physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are tending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Divine Mother, Lord, divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and so to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as to lead us through the cross to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Under thy protection we seek refuge, O Holy Mother of God. In our needs, despise not our petitions, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God.